Let's take a quick minute to look at a CVHE or F or G's oil cycle and how the basic layout is. Because looking at the manual can be a bit confusing in how their diagram is. I'm not a huge fan of it. So with that, we have our oil pump and our oil reservoir. You've got your little filter here with a filter block. We're going to come out of that and feed into our oil cooler, which is mounted inside of our economizer on most modern machines. Now, I've gotten word that uh, the newest series of these coming out with the 514 refrigerant, they've actually started to do away with these economizers, or the economizer cooler, I should say. But either way, we're going to feed through that and then back out, and we're going to tee off, and we're going to have one line come up into our thrust bearing. So this back bearing in here in the back of the motor, this is going to be your thrust bearing, and the other side of that tee is going to feed up into our journal bearing on the front side of our motor. Uh, and these two bearings are what run the entire chiller from there. Now, the drains of these bearings come out the bottom side. So on the bottom of the back thrust bearing cover, there is a drain that feeds into a little oil separator. Now, these weren't always used. There are some older machines that did not utilize this separator. Uh, but on the newer ones, they typically do. And the journal bearing on the front side is going to have a drain that comes down and flows into that separator as well. Now the goal of this is just any refrigerant that does happen to get blended in with the process and maybe it's part of the motor cooling circuit, uh, that was able to flash off and we're able to get as much of a pure oil to drain back in as we possibly can. And then this would be a oil drain coming back into our reservoir. Now, if the system did not have the separator, then these two lines would just tee back together on the drain side of the, of the uh, on the bottom of the, underneath the motor and drain back. Now, all of this is running in between the evaporator and the condenser. So on the graphic here, I'm just kind of showing you what the layout is, but just keep, bear in mind that the actual location of these is going to be in between the heat exchangers of the system. And this is your basic layout for a CVHE, CVHF centrifugal chiller, or CVHG as well. And I'm Holden Schamberger, by the way, I'm with Chiller Academy. If you'd like some really good chiller training or you'd like to take your chiller career to the next levels, I highly encourage you to take my Introduction to Chillers course. It's there at chilleracademy.com. It'll really help you out. Come join the community. Let us discuss through your field questions or whatever it is you're dealing with. I'm here to take care of you with that MTT. Make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. They really need you.